Hi all, welcome back. I'm going to be tackling the clutch cable. So if you remember, there was a slight cut in the cable and me being me, that wasn't good enough. So it's got to be changed. I've got the new cable. It's a bit of a nightmare to root. So we're just going to get on with it and have a go. Two mugs in a workshop. Previously on Two Mugs in a Workshop. We took a huge gamble when we bought this BMW G310R off eBay. Untried, untested, with no recorded mileage. Tank off. And there's a lot more fuel in there than the one bar on the fuel gauge gave credit. So that's it, new fuel filter is on. Um, obviously I'm gonna wait now before I get the spark plug. I just took the spark plug out with the, the old air gun. I'm going to see if I can get inside that old fuel filter actually without blowing myself up. It's important that you make sure that there's no naked lights or other idiots anywhere near it in the workshop. Thanks, Mark. I feel a bit bad some ways because we're doing a lot of mechanical stuff. Rest assured, there's lots of cosmetic stuff coming along. Uh, some fairly exciting things been happening behind the scenes this week. But we've really got to get this. Are you filming? I was. Oh, it's alright guys, come on. I didn't just start. He's on the motorway, an inconsiderate customer. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Which, which customer is that Mark? Would you like to name that person? No. The BMW workshop instructions actually say to release the two nuts either side of this bracket. You can't see too well because that's in the way. You see that nut there, I've just moved the ratchet out of the way. Uh, I mean, there's no room in there. That's going to be all right, faff messing about in there. It just seems easier to me to take the whole bracket out. And then with the clutch cable still attached to it, it can get the new one in exactly the right position and, you know, mark it all up. So that's the way I'm going to do it. You can see I managed to get a five mil uh, Allen key, I think it was, in this little ratchet. Um, got enough access this way. So my little ratchet's coming across and you're basically pushing towards the cylinder head to let it go. Once it's undone, you can just take it out and unscrew those by hand. They're coming out really easy. The one's out and the other side, you can see I've gone in over the top of that frame bar. They're not tight on my bike. They came out really easy. So don't sweat too much about taking these out. To release the cable, pretty easy to be honest. Just pushing the clutch lever and the cable is on a slit at the other end. It's going to be very difficult to see that coming out, but I will try for you. I'm going to film through a very small gap. That's about as close as I can get the camera in there, but hopefully it gives you a good idea. So, I'm just going to push in the clutch just slightly with my thumb, and then you can see the end of the cable. It's just got like a tit on the end of the cable, comes out, let that go, that's it. That's the clutch cable loose at this end. So now I just need to work back up to the other end of the bike, add the clutch lever end and start removing it there. You want to pull the rubber cap out of the way. The cap actually comes supplied with the new clutch cable. And you want to wind this in against the clutch lever mechanism as far as you can and then just back it off until you can see a little slot that's cut in there so clearly you can lift the cable out i'm going to go hands free and i'm going to show you that slot so this is wound in as far as it will go at the moment and you can see the thread just through the gap and then if you just back it off slightly apologies for the shaky camera work as you back it off you see the slot appear and you can now actually see the cable inside the slot so the cable will lift straight up and out so it's just going to be a case now of picking that out given that it's all released at the clutch end we've got so much slack now on the cable at this end that we can just completely unscrew it out of the handle Lift it up, 90 degrees. Should just pull out. <laughs> but it doesn't. 
nothing to do with that easy, is it? There you go, there you go. And it's straight back out. So just a little bit of a wiggle to get it out. All released. Just a matter of chasing the cable now through the frame. Probably worth taking some photographs or something if you've got to remember where everything goes. On my bike, the cable is tied at the rear of the bike just on this one cable clip by the looks of things. It then works its way up and around underneath the fuel tank. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's another clip somewhere further up the front, but for now, I can only see the one. So I'm just gonna cut that off and we'll start on routing it. And again, you can see where it comes up through the frame, it runs underneath the fuel tank. Got the spark plug hole there, and the cylinder head. Uh, and then disappears under the front of the frame, underneath this air box. Bit of a patience game, this one. <laughs> um, ideally, because it's quite tight on rear, we might have to use the new cable, the old cable rather, to pull the new cable through. But up at the top of the handlebars, there's not much room. So really, it's a case of pushing down on the cable up by the clutch lever down the handlebar where it goes down past the instrument cluster and pulling the cable um, that runs underneath the frame and it goes through there's no drama i don't want to make it sound difficult or anything i think it's just one of them things that you want to if you can do just take your time with it work it through but once we get it down to the level at the top of the forks type area then maybe we want to think about pulling it through because there's not a great deal of room for that cable um, going through so we'll see how we go so i'm working it from the clutch backwards sorry from the clutch lever backwards to the clutch itself so front to back let's see what happens so i've got it down now you can see clutch cable just there and I'm, I think I am going to actually tape the new one. Just use a bit of duct tape and tape the cable around so that it pulls it through. You see the two cables now that I fed through. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and tape these two together with a very small piece of duct tape. Um, before you do this, make sure that you've got the part of the new cable, which goes to the rear, which is this nice shiny silver one. Uh, and run it through the handlebars, run it through the gap down the back of the instrument cluster and the forks because last thing you want to do is be, you know, start pulling it through. There's not much bend in these. So I'm hoping this will just get me underneath the tank. And you can actually use the ends of the cable to your advantage on this because you can put the tape between them. And then I'm hoping that that will stop it from pulling back through again. So give me a sec just while I... Tape this together. They're on now. And you can see the two ends of the cable are sticking outside the tape. So my hope is that they stop the tape from pulling apart as it comes through. And it's gonna be a case of pulling from the area underneath the fuel tank, the cable, pulling it through in this direction. You see it moving through slowly and giving it a push from the top as well at the same time going to go really slowly with it and I'm just going to see whether I can get it through. We've only got to get it through the part where it goes under the fuel tank, so the air box rather, and the fuel tank. So if we're very careful with it, there we go. And you can see where it's come up through the frame. Go nice and slow, you don't want to damage this rubber boot on, the, on your new cable for sure. So I can now untape un it this end and then we can start to manually feed it through the rest of the way. So now I've pulled that through, now would be a good time to try and get the cable roughly adjusted. So if you put these two side by side with one another, you can see where the bracket is. And I've got those two nuts pretty much in the same right place. So I can now let the bracket go off this cable and attach it to the new one. And there's the bracket on the new cable. Just gonna pull it through now. So I can hope you all can see I've got the clutch cable bracket all plugged in back at the clutch end. Um, taking that bracket off did make life easier getting the cable out, but when I was putting it back in again, 
um, you just can't attach the cable onto that bracket and then get the cable in place. There's too much tension on the cable because the cable's bent. So it's far easier to just put that bracket back in loosely um, in position and then put the cable through it and then tighten up those two um, adjustment nuts either side of it. They're 12 mils. The access isn't fantastic in there because you're kind of restricted by the exhaust and the frame. Um, you can see the frame rail running across there. And if I come around the back, you can see the exhaust coming off the top of the cylinder head. So things are tight in there, but not impossible. You just got to pick away at, the, at those two nuts, tighten them up. So at the moment, they're nipped up. They're roughly where the original one was. And I'm going to move up to the handlebar end now. And the clutch issues at the moment. You've got Mark over here. He's looking at a um, 4 Series BMW, which came in as a non-runner. Hey up, Mark. How you doing? Ah, uh, stinky winky, look, he's got his telly tubby look going again. What are you up to, Mark? High pressure fuel pump. Okay. Checking for swarf in it. Yeah. Yeah, this car's been a bit of a non starter. It's a really weird one, to be honest. Um, nice interior going on, though. Yeah, it, it did run briefly, came in the workshop, it's cutting out. We suspect it might be the fuel pump uh, relay, the fuel pump control module. Um, but the N20 engine is a bit prone to timing chain issues and swarf in the fuel pump when the high pressure fuel pump starts to break up. So um, ongoing investigation. The handlebar end then, you can see clutch cable poking out there. It's got some plastic protective wrapping on, which I'll take off shortly before fitting it all. Um, the old handles on there at the moment. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is start by removing this handle and the clamp assembly because if you remember the threads are broken on it and the new one has arrived this is the new clutch lever this is the one that arrived all the way from spain i've got to give a big shout out to these guys as well um t max i don't know who you are but the fact you can get me a clutch lever for a bargain price all the way from spain in like five days or so is incredible so brilliant i mean the thing looks absolutely it looks brand new obviously we're gonna not use the lever itself so that one probably go back on ebay the part that we're really interested in is the clamp there and we've got some nice threads on that and everything looks hunky dory so i'm looking forward to fitting it right cool so that's the well, what was left of the clutch lever, I guess, assembly removed from the bars. Now, don't forget, guys, there's a micro switch on here, um, which detects when the clutch is pulled in. And that runs down through the frame of the bike, and it comes underneath. And actually, the wiring is kind of behind the ECU. So we've already taken the ECU off once before, so again, it's not going to hurt us again. So we might as well whip that off. Um, five mil Allen head bolts, there's three of them on that. And to take the uh, lever off was just um, an eight mil socket. So should give you some ideas there. This shouldn't be too difficult. Let's see what happens. Just a bit of an afterthought really on that previous statement, because I know that the micro switch on my clutch lever works absolutely perfectly. Um, I'm not going to change it. I'm actually going to remove it from the mechanism and I'll reinsert it. And then obviously that will save me rerouting the wiring. Two levers on the floor. The one with the aftermarket blue flip-up type handle, adjustable, is the one that I'm going to keep. And this horrible long thing is the original BMW lever. Now, I've put them opposite ways around because I want to show you that on the one side, there's a 5mm hex, and on the other side, there is an 8mm uh, nut. So you'll need to just grab that 8mm nut on the other side while you let the hex go. That should release the lever out of the whole clutch assembly. What I've just realised is once I've taken the nut off the back, as you can see up at the top, um, this is on a thread, so you'll need to wind that out. 
That's the assembly completely disassembled. It's always worth keeping these things together. I know it's pretty obvious which way that bolt goes through, but just so you don't forget, if you've not done this before, just keep things together and keep them in the, in the right order. So we're going to completely remove that lever from the equation. And obviously this is the damage bracket. So I'm going to disassemble the good lever and then I'll reassemble it all. And I'll show you the final thing when it's all back together. Okay guys, um, uh, absolutely have lost the will to live with this bike yesterday. I had to have a day off from it all. My lord, my oh, lord. Hello Mark. Hello, my lord. The welcome hello. servants. Talking of which, uh, I made the last coffee. Ah! <laughs> now you are dreaming. Oh well, carrying on. Yeah, I lost the will to live with this thing. I had to have a day off from it yesterday. It was absolutely... Well, let's just say there were some choice words done to this bike. I gave Mark full permission to do whatever he liked to the bike over the coming days because I've fallen out of love with it now. Uh, long story short, then here's a recap. Okay, problem with the clutch lever. Um, if you remember, I got all of the cable routed. You can see it sticking out the top there, ready to connect up to a lever, which I haven't got. So the lever that i bought from spain is this one which was in great condition and i can't fault the guys who sold it but i made the schoolboy error of not checking the part codes before i ordered it and although you would think that a clutch lever would be the same on these bikes as over the years they haven't really changed too much uh, they are now this part of the clutch lever the part that the lever actually inserts into is the only piece i needed but BMW say I have to buy the complete clutch assembly in order to get that one part. On the newer bikes, be very careful because the clutch lever, the thickness of the lever, it's a lot thicker. And so these two clamps aren't the same. So when you put your old brake levers in and bearing in mind, I've got the adjustable flip up style aftermarket levers on there they're just wobbling up and down backwards and forwards and that's dangerous and we can't do that so this unfortunately it's going back on ebay it's no good then there was no others available i can't find one anywhere i've looked all over the place i found a guy in holland somewhere he's got three of them for sale of breakers but with the shipping and everything else it was still coming in about 70 pounds which is a lot of money for a clutch lever I've tried to get them from India, and I found out there's no eBay in India. We'll come back to that maybe another day. Google it yourself, there is no eBay in India. I couldn't believe it, but there isn't. Um, so, and I got no replies from part suppliers in India for this one little piece. Now over there, you can buy this piece separate. So, um, the manufacturer of these bikes over in India lists this part and I found an online price list at six euros. I mean, that's what, five pounds? But in the UK, we can't buy it. So BMW quoted 135 pounds retail for this lever, complete lever assembly, plus VAT. Now I get trade on it, so that came down to 115 pounds plus VAT, which is still way too much, I mean, Come on guys, I only paid £1,200 if you consider the bits I've sold already. £1,200 in the bike. It's just not worth spending that on a clutch lever. So yesterday, after hours and hours and hours online and tons of research, I gave up. And I rang BMW and I placed an order for a brand new clutch lever. So what we said on that phone call, well, a few swear words probably. And I spoke to a different person at BMW who told me 65 pounds retail and to me only 58 pound. So to top it all off, to cut a long story short, the first person I spoke to gave me an incorrect price on the clutch lever assembly. They told me, 135 when these are actually only 
65 pounds. I mean, I was furious. However, uh, it's a project. Things like this are gonna happen. You know when you buy a project that you're gonna get hit for things. And on that note, uh, I found another thing I got hit for as well. So I'll grab the camera and uh, we'll go hands held and I'll show you what else I noticed. Shout when you see it. Because I can't believe I didn't see it. I mean, I've been looking over this thing for the last two weeks. Seen it yet? Seen it yet? Getting warmer. Come on guys, you haven't seen it now. Yeah, can't believe I didn't see that. Look at that. Just, sometimes I think you go a bit snow blind working on things, you sort of so into something else, you miss things. Somebody's obviously broke the air pipe going into the air box and um, decided to put some gunk all over it, which effectively means that it needs a new air box and this pipe is probably gonna to be toast as well. Um, it goes down to a secondary air, auxiliary air controller um, valve, which is going to be really hard to get in shot actually, but um, it's this thing here anyway, this thing here, which to get to the back of it, I'm not going to get a good camera angle on that. So the good news is that I found an air box really cheap on eBay from Cheshire Bike Breakers who we've used before and are brilliant. So appreciate their help on that one. The pipes, however, um, do you know what? I could have got the pipes because they had the valve as well. Um, I've tested this and I know there's nothing wrong with it. So I figure that with it being pipes and air leaks and all that kind of stuff going on, I'd get new pipes. So I ordered um, a pack of pipes. They have to, unfortunately, you have to buy them in a pair. So there's two air pipes come off that valve. I'm gonna try and get in there. You won't be able to see it, but there's one here on the side and the one that goes down towards the engine. So they've already arrived actually. I'm still waiting for the air box though. And it's things like this that start to annoy you, add up, uh, but on the other hand, I'm quite glad I found it now while all the tank is off and the fairings are off and stuff rather than later on. So um, it's just not worth taking the risk on that. We're going on a road trip at some point on this bike and for that to be break on me potentially uh, on the way around, I just don't fancy it. So £15 for a new airbox, not too bad. The end of a frustrating week. But on the upside, at least we're going to learn how to disassemble and reassemble the airbox. So we'll do just that in the next episode and we'll finish assembling the clutch and adjusting it correctly. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, it helps us out massively and hit the thumbs up.